share something with y'all some knowledge I've obtained and this is surefire right here like a hundred percent you know I am a new elk hunter but this is something you can take to the bank and it's called uh, the turd tap the turd tap test method that's when you know you're around elk every day I have found elk and this is how I have done it basically what you're looking for when you go after elk is sign what I've seen what I've learned this week is that they pretty much just trample through the woods they can be super silent at times but when they are moving in a group uh, it's like a herd of cattle there's a lot of poop on the ground they eat a lot they poop a lot you know they urinate on the ground they're, they're heavy so they're making big hoof prints they're knocking over uh, plants and knocking down limbs. It's hard to tell the timing on that. 
when I get up to a certain elevation and I start seeing some poop, then I'll slow down. But then I'll just kind of follow that until I see, I'll just walk around the area until I see fresh dung, fresh poop. And the way you test it is you tap it with your foot. You know, everyone's stepped in poop before around some cows or maybe it's at home with your you know, backyard with your dogs. You, slip, you step in a nice, fresh, slippery one and you know. As soon as you step in, you're like, ugh, God. Well, you can use that basic life knowledge up here in the mountains with these elk. And this has happened multiple times where I've gone up and I've just kind of, I, I, when I walk along, I just touch it with my boots, just go up to it. You know, for example, we got some cattle out in this pasture. You know, this one that took a dump right here next to my tent, that one's real crusty. I can tap that and I can go, okay, yeah, that's really dry. And that's pretty easy to tell and you really don't even have to tap that to look, you can just look at it and know it's dry. But when you get one that kind of looks fresh and then you tap your boot in it and the like green stuff comes out and it's just really squishy and there, maybe there's flies on it, then you know that probably happened in the last hour or so and I've done it so many times up here now I can get it dialed into well, that was probably in the last 30 minutes and when I was coming down the mountain today I wanted to explore a new area and I did I walked about a mile at the same elevation that I was seeing poop locked into the poop kept the same elevation and then I found a super fresh one as soon as I tapped my foot in it elk busted they busted out it is so incredibly hard in these mountains that you can only see like 50 60 yards as soon as you find that fresh slippery poop slow down slow down because you're around elk take like 10 20 steps stop listen look around see if you're seeing anything the turd tapping test y'all it is 100 percent surefire redneck science but i'm telling you it works it works out here so that's what I'm going on I'm going back up to the same area um, to my my spike out tent camp and I have deduced by walking like a five mile radius that that is where the most fresh poop is that's where I've seen the most elk that's where I saw a herd of 20 elk last night just way too many eyeballs couldn't draw on them but um, it's been amazing how much I've learned and experienced up here and that's what I wanted to do. So I, I've already considered this trip a major success, but really, realistically, I have this evening and tomorrow morning to really get an elk down because it'll take me about a whole day to process the meat. So I'm going to spend the night up there again. I'm running low on GoPro batteries. I've only got like two or three left. I'm literally having to sleep with them inside of my sleeping bag just to keep them warm. I'm gonna eat me some fresh trout here um, and some taters, really get my energy up. Maybe make some coffee, it's super windy right now. Maybe catch a couple of cutthroat trout down here that I thought were brook trout that I now know that are cutthroats, then I can keep them. We're gonna head back up the mountain, try to do it all over again. Kokanee salmon. 100% worth fishing for. They fight hard, but they taste harder. So I've pretty much had the same thing every day. The chance I've been able to come back to camp and eat these. Y'all, I've never been anywhere this remote in my life. There's not a lick of cell phone service. You can forget about that. There's really no connection to the outside world except for my GPS. That allows me to send some satellite messages. That's it, just black and white text. So having like a good, hot, cooked meal and fresh fish, which is for me uh, a symbol of home, like just reminds me of family. Oh, it's so good, so good. Maybe one day I'll bring Steph and Emmy up here and we'll all enjoy some of these trouts together. Throw it home. You know, just taking a little break from the elk, getting some trout. Ooh. Got 
These things fight really, really strong. <sighs> Actually, that is, that's a different species there. Fishing action ended up with some sort of hybrid. Uh, it was like a brown cutthroat hybrid. It had spots all the way down, so I knew it wasn't a full cutthroat, but it did have those little orange pieces. So I don't know, it, there's a lot of hybrids in here. And then I got a, a straight up cutthroat. So I'm gonna clean him up and I'm going to uh, add him to my trout aggregate to take home, or I'll eat them while I'm here. This wind is crazy. Thermals! So I was just looking back at the footage between a brown trout and a cutthroat trout. Brown trout's got spots all the way down. Really beautiful fish, and then the cutthroat, much more orange, like that was definitely what I was catching the other day. And it looks like a cross between the two because it has spots all the way down. It has that little orange, um, it says crimson slash on either side of their throat beneath the lower jaw. Well, my tip just decided to blow in. Oh, no! Stop! Holy crap! No! What's going on here? Holy cow! My tit's falling down. I'm holding up with my foot! Whoa! Some voracious mountain winds coming in right now. Oh, what, what am I supposed to do here? This should probably be the thumbnail. <laughs> Stopping the tent from falling with my leg. Look at that leg. That leg has been worked by the mountains, let me tell you. Oh, holding a good stretch here. Wow. Well, I just happened to have the camera in my hand. I was reviewing some footage and then... Uh, the tent side to blow over. I'm gonna have to get out there and attach some supports on the outside. So uh, this thing doesn't blow away. All right. All right. Thank you, Mother Nature. It's a little adventure. It's always good. Good for the heart and soul. You gotta love it. Okay, crisis averted. I got out there. I drove drove the stakes back in. The problem is it's all rocks here. So I'm having to drive the stakes like sideways into the ground. It's not a, the best hold, but I put on one support with rope on it. Hey, it's raining now. So, boy, Colorado mountains, it's a punch right in the teeth. It's beautiful, and at the same time, just like, also dangerous. Gotta have ourselves a steam <laughs> cup before we head up on the mountain, y'all. One last taste of deliciousness, semi-civilization, base camp before we head up to little camp. I hope my tent is still there, y'all. It became a nasty storm. I had to restake my tent and uh, put an extra rope brace on there. It was bad, it rained a lot, and I checked the forecast via my Garmin unit, and it's looking like rain still in the forecast for the rest of the evening. So it's not really gonna be pleasant. Hell, like I said, New Zealand. <laughs> that was unpleasant the whole time, wet, never got dry. <sighs> Sucking every last bit of warmth because it's gonna be in the 40s tonight. Bring a warm blanket, let's go.
was above the rocks. And they were down there and they could smell me. So, this is the time of day where the wind is like, it's pushing down the mountain again. So, I don't know. I don't know the best position to be in. I just made a few cow calls. This little valley. Most of the time, they've seen has been me making noise. So they're just creeping along. You almost have to just move like the elk, think like the elk. Become one with the elk. Well, here we are again, back at camp. I sat there. successful pattern all the way through my trip and uh, I might just get outside my tent in the morning and start calling because they are everywhere I'm amongst the turds so cross your fingers for me hope it happens the elements have been rough out here y'all but I'm tackling it I'm giving it my absolute best my absolute all I'm doing everything I can and I'm hunting to the last minute, which is tomorrow, about 10, 11 o'clock. I'm, I'm done. I'll have no more time left, so nature's throwing everything it can at me. Cold, rain, you know, <laughs> that's just part of it. But, hey, smash the like button for just getting out in the outdoors and getting after it. I will see you guys on the next one.